Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Broken by Concept, aka Coach Curtis and Nathan Mott reacting. Reddit reacts. To re Reddit, mostly summoner school, the top post over the last week. One thing I want to do, Nathan, yeah. if we get time today, it'd be okay. really good to do, is go on our on our main champions Reddit. Yeah, okay. So if you go to Rexi or something, okay. I'll go to like maybe Cassiopeia or Victor and just like see what's there. I have not seen anything from those Reddits. Interesting. And then see if there's like just just to, you know, we can we can dabble it if we have time today. If there's not, if there's not maybe not much good on the summer school Reddit. All right, we can definitely do that. So um Let's start off Kick with off. Summoner School here. So yep. I think the first post here looks pretty interesting. Yep, looks interesting. Uh, role balance is irrelevant for 99.98% of all players. This is definitely something that uh, one of our philosophies as yeah. well, I'd say, that we talk about. We talk about champ mastery and no matter what meta, we should be sticking to our champions unless in extreme cases. Yeah. Um, all right, so hi, I recently started coaching for fun to see how it feels. And one of the first things I notice is how most of the players that I'm coaching, so this guy's a coach, mm -hmm. and even friends say something on along the lines of, I'm top lane, so I'm playing a useless role. It's an enchanter player, so it, in reality, he's iron. Jungle is so broken. That's the most boring one I've ever heard. Mm. I can show you many of my games where jungle looks not too hot, but uh, that's uh, another story. Every champ, every hound has to do their job. That's our mindset. Um, if you find yourself seen in one of these sentences, then you're looking at the game wrong. Absolutely agree with that. It's not like the roles have no skill differences. It's that skill difference of a role comes at, as the very last thing after everything else. What I mean by that is that to clearly see the impact difference from, let's say, jungle versus mid lane, you would need everyone to play perfect. And even then, it depends on champs and execution of team comp. I recently reached master with a 70% win rate on two different roles, and not once I had a situation where I said, if I had a better role, I would have won this game. That's a great mindset that guy has. Uh, it might happen in high challenger that this could be a thing, but it sure shouldn't affect anyone below that. What a beautiful post. Awesome post. Really, dude. really articulate. So this is a high elo player, you know, you know, he's got a good mindset of the game for him from himself. He doesn't sort of seem like he really blames like people. It. Yeah. So we are, we're just in agreement. There's nothing. Let's see, read the comments. Yeah, read the comments. Is, that, is that what we're saying? This is definitely a philosophy that we have broken by concept. And it's cool that it's, this is super upvoted. Yeah. I'm really happy to see that. I mean, it's great. It's what we want to see ideally. To add something, when high elo players say jungle and midland are the best roles to carry, this is true only if your skills are effectively higher than your current elo. Let me let me repeat that one in my head. I don't really quite get it. Me when too. high elo players say jungle and midland are the best roles to carry, this is true only if your skills are effectively higher than your current elo. Right. So what he's saying is that if if you're truly better than your counterpart, you know, you'll have a much easier time doing that if you're in mid lane or jungle. That's the way I interpret that. Yeah. Would you agree with that sentiment? Yeah. I mean, but I think you could apply that to all roles. Yeah, I think exactly. I think like again, that's a very ugh, like at the very top of challenger, sure. That's where like maybe, you know, maybe in a particular meta, a, a given role is stronger than others. That's objectively yeah. true when it comes to high chow, right? Of like, course, yeah. You'll see in particular servers or j j different metas, junglers might dominate the solo queue, like the top of the solo queue ladder, and then it might be midlanders, or it could be eighty carriers or supports, whatever it might be. Um, so it does very much depend on on meta in that sense. Maybe this is just a meta thing to do, but if I'm versing Cupcake's Bard, dude, on you know that that guy could look like support, look yeah. insanely impactful, no yeah. matter what you like. Well, yeah, what I like about this post is that um, you know, in terms of balance, it's like okay, League of Legends. Is, here we go. Is another buzz with the, the buzzword that we always say, or like another term that we repeat a trillion times. League is a complex game, very, very, very complex. To even see the minute, like to be able to even objectively see the balance of a game, whatever, I, I don't even know how to even gauge the balance of a game in, in general. Like it's, you have to be like a goddamn game designer or like a hardcore, you have to play the game for a very, very long time to be able to spot if the game is quite a quite balanced mm. in terms of roles. Mm. Um, to have the audacity to comment on the game's balance if you are not at the very top of something is very – it's just an emotional statement. It actually has no weight. Like if you think about any, right, like any other field, right, 
a lot of the time you can't really comment on the on the rules of the game until you've played it or like like the way like the minute details. Like for example, like American football is a common one, right? Where there's like all these small little rules. Yeah, that's also very. Who are you to really sport. comment on the small little details of the rules until mm. like you're playing at a very high level where it really impacts you? Because mm. there's so many things that you could be doing better up until that point. The the minute details of like what may or may not be perfectly balanced has nothing to. Like I always say this example, if you're playing Lux and you're missing your first two E's of the lane, that's, you know, 200 damage or whatever you're missing. <laughs> Think about the patch notes that says Lux, you know, this champion has five more damage on Q. You've just missed 200 damage in the first minute, first 40 seconds. So it doesn't, you know, 160 damage, first 60 seconds, doesn't matter. So, you know, yeah, I love this post. I think it's a really important post and an important message to spread. Any other comments here with highlighting? We, I think we're just happy good. with the post. Love I it. Think, Great post. Yep. Good stuff. Actually, one thing, sorry, one thing I want to talk about this because before people get angry, meta, meta is different to balance, right? Because the overall balance of the game is 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 a different con- it's a different topic to meta. Correct? Is that right? Say that again. So is is the meta of a game that's different to balance, isn't it? Like overall game balance, but isn't it? Because this the same is, thing, so to be right? clear, this guy's talking about the he's talking about role balance, not game balance, right? Okay. So whatever you do, careful to distinguish here, role balance. Um, because I was talking more about overall game balance, um, like in terms of itemization and stuff like that. But in terms of role balance, is there anything different about that? Let me just quickly think about this. Um. Yeah, I mean, how could it's, you? It's sort of tied together. Yeah, it's yeah. all tied together, really. Have you ever thought about that, by the way, in your climb, that like that role is just better? Not once. Yeah, not once either. Because I know how much impact I can be having on the game if I play perfectly. Actually, you know, I'll be if I'm going to be brutally honest, I have felt at times that jungle, um, I have gotten frustrated at jungle sometimes, if I'm being brutally honest with myself. like I have, enemy team or your team? No, just jungle as a role, just in general. Yeah. It's like That's this how much it sways looks, the game. Yeah, they, it looks like to me they have a lot more impact and they do have, objectively have a lot more impact in the early game. That's right. Um, and I guess for me, because I'm so obsessed with the early game, it makes sense for me to kind yeah, of have okay. that feeling. Yeah. So yeah, I can see that. And you know, I know it's kind of bullshit because I can make up for it in the, in the mid game. So <laughs> but whenever I complain about early game jungle, it's me just either... Just not having, not playing well, essentially. Yeah. It's a defense mechanism. Yeah, it's a defense mechanism, 100%. All right. Itemization. You want to go over itemization? This one I think is maybe interesting. Okay. Get killed, respawn, and open shop. Realize I need 100 more gold to get an item. Mm. This happens so frequently. I have no idea if it's correct or not. As the title says, I respawn and I need 100 more gold to complete an item. I am a jungle main, so I do run out, clear an entire side, and then back, or do I usually just wait? Um, in spawn for the item. Wait in 100 gold. Don't know about that one. <laughs> I know you can maximize your productivity by running around the map, getting stuff done while waiting for the 100 gold. However, I don't want to get into a fight and not have the item. That's a really good mindset. I like that. Uh, playing around items packs. That's, a, that's one of the biggest learning objectives I have mm. for my gold clients. Yeah. I literally be like, okay, once we have the item, there's almost nothing more important to do than go and get the item. Yep. Because League's not about... Gold inventory, what did we say? Gold inventory is useless unless gold it's spent. Doesn't mean, yeah, gold doesn't mean shit until you spend it. You know? It's kind of my mindset of have it, but don't need it rather than need it, but don't have it. It was death stance, so it was a pretty huge item. Um, so There's some good things and some off things, he, right? He says respawn, I need 100 more gold. That's out of you. If you died, let's look at the death. Well, that's that's different. That's like, the problem, right? The, the death is the problem. Yeah, the death's than, not the problem rather than the 100 gold, you know? Like, yeah, you need to go back. You need to go back. Why but are you dying in the first place? Let's yeah. say he recalls. Maybe he means, maybe he's messed this up. Mm-hmm. Maybe he means recall at 100 gold, but then that's weird because then you would just stay on the map. You just stay on the map, right. To get that gold. But if you are in that situation, you would always leave base, right? There's no way you're ever going to stay in base for 100 gold. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's it looks like the top gun. 100 goals in 50 seconds. Yeah, that's yeah, that's never time. happening. It's never happening. Where I want to go with this more so is um, mm. how long, how important do you think is actually getting muscle memory of the gold? For items. Yeah. I wanted to talk about this. I was actually going to talk about it in the BBC episode this week, but I kind of forgot. Um, one of my observations recently is that there are certain champions that obviously s- spike with items and, mm. and some champions spike with levels, mm. right? Um. For example, Ari, pretty common champ, champ in the meta at the moment. Um, 
Ari is one of those champions where it literally is a different champion on Everfrost or Mythic. Like you are, you go from having like basically no kill threat to having a lot of kill threat just off one item, just completing that one item. And what I've noticed and what people fail to understand is that the itemization that you choose to go in for completely shapes the role and the identity of your champion, right? So if you build Ari with Everfrost, that changes. You actually are a different champion than if you were to build Ludens. You're a different champion than if you were to build Leandris. Same thing goes for many other champions in the game. Now, there are some that their identity doesn't change as much. For example, Victor is always Victor. You're always in a mobile control mage that can't, you don't have many options. But there are certain champions in the game that are very versatile kits. They can play for dive. They can play for peel. They can play for picks. And so their itemization is very, very important. And it, it, you need to understand how your itemization impacts your role and identity. And I'm assuming that's the same for junglers. There are certain junglers that they're, they're, the junglers are the jungler no matter what. They're going to do the same role. They have the same identity no matter what. There are probably other junglers. That Rek'Sai are Prowler's Claw makes a different champion. Different champion. You've called me off guard so many times with Prowler Claw, Prowler's Claw. Like that Kane situation I spoke about as well. Different champion. The ch Gore Drinker versus Prowler's Claw, it's a huge difference in what you can do in fights. And I'm assuming there's other junglers out there that have differing mythics that completely change your identity as well. Um... So I think my takeaway here, and like at least I think the main learning is that, and one of the messages I want to spread is you do need to really think about items a lot and it does need to alter your behavior. Like you need to actively think about, okay, I'm X amount of gold off that item. It would change. There'll be so many situations where let's say you wouldn't go to a fight or something like that or something because you know that, okay, I'm, or you you burn all your mana to quickly get the yep. wave to get the yeah. It completely huge. changes the behavior. Yeah, huge. Changes your behavior. And, and I think it's also really important as well, um, the muscle memory. And this is a chair mastery. Mm. This is why you- Chair mastery. Chair mastery thing as well, right? Like when yeah. I see, like let's say there's this key that I'm looking for. It's like when I have uh, Dirk and Warhammer- Getting that 900 gold, I'm just relentless on that. Yeah. Like, I'll literally just figure out a way, how do I get that as quick as possible? I don't really care about because anything you, else. But this is, you know, tying back, remember tying back to that um that analogy I used in the in the, the podcast episode this week about the Jim Bob coming home from school? In a way, you don't know what to say yes to, sorry, what to say no to, unless you know what to say yes to. So in that situation, when you're playing Rek'Sai mm. and you're getting somewhat close to your Prowler's Claw, mm. it's going to directly influence, like, you know what, you know the value of getting Prowler's Claw, so you know what to say no to. Like, if you don't, like, this is two parts. There's number one, understanding that a, a mythic is important, but knowing how important is also important as well. Like, it's, it's crucial because... The value, like, if you actually, I don't want to get too complicated here, but every play and every decision, there's like an inherent value. Like you could theory as a jungler, you could clear these camps and get this amount of gold and these resources are going to be this, this, that. And then there's another play, you go for a kill and it'll help this lane out, but it, I'll, I'll get only another thing. You'll get it, maybe less resources or be, you'll be less efficient. Your camps are still up, whatever. All of this ties back to your champ's identity and how you decide you want to win the game. So notice how these are all interconnected concepts. There's the item spikes, understand the value of the item spikes, your champ's identity, the win conditions. It, they're all interconnected. Mm. They're not independent. They're all interconnected in some way, shape, or form. Because there are going to be some situations where you're behind and it's actually better for you to actually fuck up your first your reset here and not go back for prowlers because you've got to get this person ahead because that's just the wink on. That's right. You know, so it, it, it's, you know. So many things to think about in so the game. Things. That's why it's so difficult. That's why champ mastery is always number one. That's right. Because then you, 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 you're you reducing things in your mental and stack. And reference points. It just it's helping, always number one. Giving you structure, reducing mental so stack. So like, this is what we say here. Like you know, what, what this post really is about is the value of gold and the value of items. Mm. The value of items and gold is always dependent on the game state, isn't it? It is. Yep. There's times where I know a dragon fight is really important and I don't have time. I know that I have to be at this fight early, but I can actually complete like an item. I can actually complete a mythic. I've actually at times stayed, that's right. even though I can get my Ludens, because you have, I to, be have there. to be there. That's right. Sometimes that's the reality of the situation. Mm. You know? All right. I think we need to look at the comments on that one because we sort yeah. of went a sort of different direction with yeah, that post. Yeah. Well, this is a good one. I like that. Oh, let me read this one. If you are high elo and you could give one piece of advice to low elo players wanting to get better, 
what would it be? A recent video popped up on my YouTube feed and it was called An Old Man's Advice. This got me to think about how when we were growing up, we almost always turned to people older than us for advice when we have a tough decision to make. I love that. Um, this made me think of how low elo players often go to coaching or YouTube videos for guidance when they get stuck at a rank. I'm a psych major, so yes, my head goes to weird places. Now, let, let us think about league ranks as, as stages of life so that we can visualize the similarities. Childhood, nothing really matters, just having fun, pre-level 30. I love that. That's beautiful. Pre-teen, start of your life journey, just having fun, still figuring out stuff as you go, iron to bronze. Beautiful. I love that analogy. Teenager, very stressful, lots of important decisions to make with little direction or guidance, often feels stuck, lost, or even hopeless at times. That's silver to plat. Adulthood, figuring out what you needed to do, much more stable, knowledgeable, but still a few things to figure out, diamond to GM. And then elderly, the most wise, have gone through all stages of life, challenger. I'm curious as to what one piece of advice the adults and elderly would give to the teenagers. And it is weird looking at our rank journey and comparing it to the journey of life. Um, uh, but there are a lot of similarities as shown above. I've gotten some of my best life advice from my grandparents and was curious if this, if you could possibly correlate it to league at all. Edit. While this post really blew up, hopefully I get enough upvotes to make it a little bit of reacts. <laughs> the what the hell? That's so cool. <laughs> That's awesome. He wants to, this guy wants to get on the Reddit React Fight of Broken My Concept podcast next week. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> he made it, dude. Quite, we didn't even see that I mean, coming. What a great post. What we, did was, we don't, we just, we're live reacting to this. Yeah, like, live. This is a live, live. reaction. <laughs> I had no idea what we're getting ourselves into here. What a beautiful post. I love that analogy. How beautiful I'm is that? I'm still on that. What's his name? The, he's. Uh, the, the coin dude the three. coin dude three dude we're gonna be stealing that yeah what a beautiful I love this it's such a great way to do, it's such a a great to mindset. think about the journey yeah to think about the journey it, it really is like that actually I love how the teenager one very stressful lots of important decisions to make with little direction or guidance even feeling hopeless that's silver to plat yeah. I would agree with that I would say it's actually probably more gold to plat. Okay, you think that the the preteen is still? I'd say preteen is still fun. Yeah. Okay. I'd say I would say if I were to you know just nitpick, I'd say it's iron to silver. Yeah. And I'd say uh, gold for maybe like silver one, gold four. Yeah. Teenager. Yeah. Like maybe high silver. Yeah. Um, to like plat four, yeah, and then actually, I would even say it's high plat, yeah, high plat, and then yeah, add or hold diamond. Yeah, I would agree with that. So it's mm. pretty accurate. Um. Before we look at the comments, what advice would you give, Nathan? One piece of advice. Piece of advice. Oh, it's so rough because it's hard. One. It's like what stage of the it's journey? Like you got, it's like you're dying. You're on the deathbed, and then like your grand your grandchild comes over and says, "Nathan, I just want to get good at the game. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to you, and I've heard such good things about you. Please help me." Okay, it's really simple. You've you've got to love the game. And if you don't love the game, then everything's just difficult. Like you just got to love the game, playing the game. That's that's my advice. And always assess why you play the game. That's it. That's me as my deathbed. That's a great one. I like it. Just, um, just really breaking it down to the core, like why we're doing this, why yep. we do this podcast, why I play the game. Yep. If I don't love the game, I'm not going to, like, what's the point? You know? No, like it's really beautiful. Uh, you know, time's short. Do things you enjoy. Yeah. I like it. Um, I would say, I would say, um, take time. Take time. Oh man, I've got two things, and they're both so important. Come on, just, uh, get, just go to go. Here we go. They'll right, both be valuable. Both valuable. I'd say, um, take time to to understand the consequences of your actions. That's it. Like if you make a decision, don't just think about what you're going to get. Think about what you're losing as well. There's always two sides of the coin. That's a good one. There's always, that's how I, that's how I actually think about the game at like a really fun, like from when I'm doing my reviews, I'm making a decision. What's the consequence? There's always a um, there's always a cost involved. Cost, that's there's right. always a cost, no yeah. matter what, whether it's tempo, whether it's my prio, whether it's resources, whether it's whatever it is. I like that's for me. 
if you're like an old man death, I would say that that's like a, it's like just be be curious, be curious. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's well. like it's yeah. like curiosity, that's a great right? One. Yeah, that's a great one as well. I was going to say as well. Um, the other one that was close close second was take time to look at the other side of the coin, like what it would be like to be the enemy. Look at it from the other person's perspective. perspective love that because that like that increases empathy and 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 open mindedness and curiosity. If you just take time to look at it from the enemy's perspective, it just changes your entire view of the game. I think it's more your team's perspective is more important. Yeah, you can do that as well. That's got to be a yeah. lot of results. Just just anyone else but you. Yeah, anyone else but you. That's it doesn't right. really matter who. It's easy to think you're the the center of the universe yeah. and you're the most important thing in the world, but yeah, you're just one part of the game. So the top comment here, um, almost anything you do as an emotional response is most likely wrong. Don't take being invaded or ganked personally. Don't think it's your responsibility to save your teammates from bad fights, uh, to make up for their misplays, to force something. Take a step back and think of the reason why you might do or not do something and if it really is a good idea or if you just feel pressured and you're acting on reflex. That's a great one. I like it. That's good. Yeah. Um, any other, see if there's any other spicy ones. Being a middle-aged man, I highly recommend not tilt queuing. The best way to climb isn't to carry. It's not to, it's to not int one games. Yep. That's good. That's about self-sabotage. Reducing self-sabotage. In the game. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, learn how to have fun even when you're losing. Love that. That's a great, if you can, if you can really embrace that, it's hard to do, but if you can embrace that, you'd be a, a good player. We had one of our comments in our last episode about the celebrating the process. Someone yeah. said celebrating the process going zero three in a block and just really got all these learnings from it and like just really enjoyed that that's time. That's amazing. If you can really embrace that's that. That's what celebrating the process looks like to him. Life. Yeah. You've won. Fixing my life outside of league has gotten me from two seasons hard stock plat four over 1K gains per season to D1 nearly masters now. The big things were exercising and sleeping well, literal. Game changer. Wow. Dude, Shout out to this guy, man. He's killing it. These are these are all our viewers, man. What's going on? Where <laughs> are these people hiding, man? This is where coming out of the woodwork for this yeah. post. It's because it's a high quality post. It's a great- good, And it, it, it attracts high quality comments. Good quality questions equals good quality answers. Hmm. Right? It's fundamental of life. This one, he says, the game is about taking towers. You take towers, you win the game. Everything else is about is secondary or tertiary. That was given to me when I first started playing the game by my D4, D3 cousin. It puts me on the correct track early on. I don't know. I don't, I don't really agree with that personally. I don't know. I don't resonate with that advice at all. No. Like I, don't, I, I actually barely think about towers. Do you? Like I, at times, but yeah, I mean, I literally will say many a times, like in terms of where you want to control the map, what side, what's the next objective in terms of tower. But then mm. you've also got dragons and rift shields also apply to that. And then you've also got wink on. Maybe you can't break a tower, so you got to be playing for lanes and towers and getting gold. I and, think wink ons are way more important than towers. Like who's fed on your team? That's true. Yeah, like way more. That's right. It is more. Towers is a consideration, but it's not it's the game near the top. game. I don't think it's nowhere near the top. Because if you if you have fed people, that equals taking towers, but that's like sort of secondary, yeah. more so, isn't yeah. it? Great, great question. Shout out that guy. Um. Okay, I've just uh, what about this one here? I've just understood how important farming is as a jungler. This is my take on why the fundamentals are super important as a solo climbing jungler. You want to go this one? All right, well, I got it. This yeah, one, take go. over. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> Get out of the way, guys. Full clearing junglers. Here we come. Um, all right. So, yeah, I've just understood how important farming is as a jungler. God, I mean, do you want to do you want to do you want to know how many reviews, guys? I've done like seven thousand reviews or something like that, six to seven thousand on my soul too, and and. <laughs> The amount of games this is ridiculous that this I is would. This is a number, by the way. Sorry to interrupt, but that number I've done six thousand. <laughs> <laughs> they're all recorded and sold. It's crazy, though. It's like, pretty crazy. It's insane. We're doing in, in ten years, we're going to have done like thirty thousand. But so if we add our numbers together in like ten years from now, it will be ridiculous. It'll be in the hundred thousands. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. Uh, the. It's. It's all about. Yeah, hitting your camps. I probably have said that literally in over half. You got to hit your camps. You got to hit your camps because what people the the mindset trap that you get into the jungler, and this is it. It's like I'm a jungler. I need to gank. Mm. Otherwise, I'm not impacted. Otherwise, people say I'm useless. Yep. I'm just a AFK farming jungler. Yep. And what I always am trying to teach is like, yes, 
there's a good gank, there's a bad gank. If there's no good gank, equals hit camps. That is very, 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 very difficult for people to really encapsulate because there's so many distractions mm-hmm. pulling you to that a gank. The kings, the narratives around win conditions, the this champ is OP, this champ needs to get ahead. I feel like that ahead. is the role. From, from, a, from a laner's perspective, I mean, I, go, I don't know that much about jungle, mm. But like from my perspective, when I think of like the the great jungles that are verse, like jungles that feel high impact and the jungles that don't, they seem to have high farm, farm. and gank a lot. That's right. Like and I don't understand it because when I play jungle, I'm like I'm either <laughs> One or the not other. ganking at all <laughs> or only ganking. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that is, I feel like it's the balancing act of jungle, isn't it? How do I do both? How do I make high impact moves while keeping up my farm? I don't, see, I don't even view it as a balance. Right. It's just correct decision, wrong decision. Right. It really is. Okay. You know, well, I trust your work. I don't know jack shit. <laughs> so yeah, I don't view it that way. I, Cause I get that question all the time, Nathan, how do I balance farming and jungle? And it's about understanding the game more. It's about understanding. You know, you know that would be the, f- like if I were to be a client mm. in this whole two, mm. that would be one of like the first questions I ask. Yeah. Like if I brought a review, I say, Nathan, I'm struggling here to balance ganking and farming. That would yeah. be like, how can you help me with this? That would be like my first thing probably. Yeah. And the, I literally wouldn't even be able to answer the question with it. We get to get into the specific yeah, details, the specific, and so. I'll show you specific situations where this is a bad gank equals you need to find. Yeah, you know, I know, I know that I'll just have to do a lot of reviews in that, you know, to cover that. All right. Anyways, we're actually getting into the post now. Uh, I've always been a bit on and off when it comes to t- champions to play. This season, I mainly focus on Warwick since I thought that the early game ganking was an unbeatable win condition. He got me from bronze one to god four. However, after going a massive loss streak, I started playing Shivana since I didn't really have an AP jungler in my kit and she looked easy. Playing Shivana really helped me understand why the fundamentals are important. Um, I think I know where this is going. Um, I just want to just quickly mention, yeah, so Warwick sucks at sort of hitting his camps. He still can hit his camp. I have a lot of Warwick players that I, I show them. You can actually hit your camps and still be have high CS with Warwick. You can do your Raptors in certain situations. But because you have so much more success farming because it's way more consistent. This obviously only sort of gets you and, and it's sort of like maybe this could go bad in terms of saying just AFK hit your camps. But you, it's all about, again, assessing the information, making the conscious decision. I do my camp because no other option. Or I'm doing my camp. I know I'm going to let my teammate die. I, I get this question all the time from Malice because Malice is like the ultimate herbivore jungler. But I say the difference between Malice and a lower elo who's doing the same style is Malice is, a, is ready Someone, he's, he's preparing his mind. He's like, that, I'm intentionally letting that person die because I'm going to go on the other side of the map and counter jungle and get really far ahead. That's happening before that person dies in his mind. That's that's why that's what's make a challenger player work with the herbivore style. And it's super way more consistent in a later game because if you're strong as a Shivana or these type of champions, most games, lower elite players aren't really good at closing out games perfectly through getting games. And he has ganks. good skirmishing. That's right as well. Good macro. Yeah. yeah. It's obviously on top of it. All right, so I've watched a ton of content on YouTube, big coaches, streamers, your standard pay service channels, everything from decision-making, ganking, not dying, blah, blah, blah. However, while I've been taking all the information in, I haven't been able to execute it properly until I watch Citrix guard Shvana. While all other guards and coaches have gone through all kinds of matchups, runes, and builds, this guy doesn't. The only thing that Citrix, I don't even know this guy, really stresses up until gold is we're just going to full clear. I So I, I've literally had this exact device as well. I even had, I think I had... um. I had this new guy who sort of switched to jungle recently and I literally told him he was playing Graves and Graves is, is a champion that doesn't really like have to full care. He has lots of options. He's like the verdict. The first review he brings to me. So he's just sort of really new to jungle like this, like this season. What he did was he did red into their blue gromp. All right. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. This is completely, I don't even want to get into this. This could have been good. This game could have been bad. What I need you to do is just start a feeling what getting level four for full clear feels like as a jungler. Cause that is the foundation of jungling. Absolute foundation. Um, so I will say that advice all the time, especially to newcomers who come into the jungle, no matter what champion you're playing, um, we need to be full clearing. Okay. So he then goes on to say, um, time and time again, sure, play for dragon, whatnot, but most importantly, full clear. I practiced my clear and got into the rift, winning 10 games in a row, not only with Shivana, but with Nocturne and Vi as well, about three out of 10 games. Even when I didn't play Shivana, my mantra was still, we're just going to do a full clear. Now, while I've always understood the farming is key, I haven't really thought about the bonus value that it gives you as a jungle main. Um, farming gives you less time to fuck up on other places than that. This is the thing it's doing. 
when you start level three ganking, because lower elo players are not really good at identifying good and bad ganks, the volatility and the inconsistency of your games will be insane because the games just can just explode from early game bad ganks from jungle. You do a bad gank, you get double killed, everyone's raging at you. But level four clear, even though it might not be the best thing to do in the game, it's a really good base beginner. It's a beginner. It's a beginner good mindset. Beginner thing, yeah. Is there something like that for mid lane? Um. I mean, okay, so like, what? Okay, there is. So, for example, there are certain. I got I got this question recently saying, um, someone said along the lines of, if I do this strategy, basically, it's like I, pl it's like they play Diana and they just kind of do the same thing. Like I shove this wave and then I, and I move to scuttle here at every every game. It's like you can have this like cookie cutter strategy. It's a good baseline, but it's going to cap you out at some point. Like at some point, you're going to have right. to it will get a bit more nuanced. Yeah. It's a, it's at least my, again, I'm not a jungler, but my what I take away from this is that like people, a big criticism of this is like, oh, but then you're you're not learning how to gank or you're not learning this and that. But at, at least you know what it feels like to have farm. Because like if you know what it feels like to have farm, then you know what you're sacrificing if you are to go for a gank and it doesn't work. That's exactly right. Perfectly right? said. Yes. That's why I always recommend it. Um, so while I'm consistently full clearing, he can't. So these are things that would negatively happen in the game if he didn't do this. Die in an unforeseen counter gank in bot lane, giving away three kills to the enemy team. Again, that would be going down to jungle trunk here fundamental, a bit more mm. of an advanced thing, you know. Again, I don't really know what this elo this guy. Mm. Oh, he says he's bronze, right? Is that what he, he went said? to gold. Oh, he went to gold, yeah. So once we start getting gold, we start talking about jungle tracking. Mm. So that would never happen if we had good fundamentals there. So right. hover around in mid lane, lose time, waiting for, for Syndra to move just to be closer to my Malzahar. We would have to assess. Again, that mm. could be very easily identifiable. Um, suddenly leave a camp to try and help my top lane who's getting dived. Is that saying a negative thing? Isn't that well, a he's saying thing? He's, when he's full clearing, he can't do these. That's actually a potentially a good thing. So I'm, mm, I'm, I'm right. with that one. See, those because those first two things are bad things. Mm, mm. The die mm. and the... Yeah, this one's a good thing, yeah. So that's a bit weird, that one. But I guess maybe he's sort of saying that, like, yeah, I think he thinks that maybe that's a negative. Well, it's going to die anyway. Yeah. He can't help. But, yeah, he could help in some situations. You would have to get specific. Yeah, yeah. Try to counter jungle, only end up getting collapsed away. Again, you could figure that one out. But, again, these are key things for the beginner that you shouldn't have to be thinking about these things when you're really learning. You just need to have a good farm, know how to play your champion, and, um, you know, not die that we talk about. Those are the basics getting up to gold. Um yeah, the comments in this post would be roasting this guy, I can sure, but this guy is on the right track. Yeah. But I could see people really getting into here. So um, he says here, I've got a lot of comments saying that, well, sure, farm is good and all, but you have thought X, Y, Z, if you're only hiding in the jungle, you're going to lose games. If you don't, you know, I could mm, definitely mm. see this. But he's going to win the majority of games. Yeah. Yeah. And build the foundation of champ mastery and just focus and just focus on that. Again, as you said, feeling what it feels like to have farm. Mm. And then we can start working on those fundamentals and the opportunities that he's missing mm. and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think that people, this would just go over everyone's head to this, this post, I feel like. But let's have a look at the comments. This probably is partly true. Ah, oh, shit! What did I do here? I think I think you just got rid of that comment there by, by that one there. I have no idea how Reddit works, guys. Okay, here we go. This post is partly true. I do agree with the fact that farming is really important for many jungles, especially the scaling ones such as Shavana. On the other hand, if you mainly full clear, if the enemy jungler is good, he will absolutely shit on you. That's not true. At they will rank. fall over themselves. Okay, more yeah. often than not, right? At this rank again. Yes, at this rank again. Since he will get every lane ahead, putting himself behind compared to you. Again, that's just such a general statement. And uh, guys, you know how many times I've seen Warwick players and stuff fall over themselves. And, and in, you know how, let's say, let's say even if this guy's full clear missing all these opportunities, if Warwick fails a gank, and even if he's gotten his team far ahead at one point, you're basically, especially with catch up stuff these days, mm. you just instantly are going to basically mm. be ahead in the game, win the game. Um, so I can, yeah, again, I already know where the comments. I, like, I, want, I want you to read that by the, oh, which one? the, the take Carthus. The take take Carthus is an example. Uh, so take Carthus as an example, even though he's an example of a perma full clearing jungler, if you watch a good Carthus play, you can see he's constantly tracking the enemy jungler to see where he will strike next to counting and can prevent his layers from dying. Keep in mind, this is a full clearing jungler. When you pick something like J4, you have to sacrifice farm for ganks because you don't scale at all with items. Your job late game is getting an EQ combo into R. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I again, is that I, true? Like when, no, when no, like as in like true. when, 
d- like when do you draw the line between like where does this get you? Say you say say a Shivana player comes into the Soul Two, yeah, and you give him this advice, yeah. Like when is it? Like when does it? When do you like stop doing it? Yeah, I'd say Gold Four. Oh, gold, gold, four. Four. Okay. gold four, we need to start thinking about where the enemy jungler starts and we need to start thinking about what's a good gank, what's a bad gank right. for sure. Otherwise, it's just going to be too hard. You to know what I've noticed? Is like the, the, the jungle fundamentals, I feel like they're, they're not clear. What do you mean? Like just from the outside in. Like I don't even know what they are. Do you, but you know what a good gank and a bad gank is, right? Yeah, but that's you know not, jungle not tracking? from... That, yeah, like, but that's not from... That's not because I'm a jungler. That's like, I view them as like... I mean, the jungle tracking is obviously a fundamental. The good gank, good gank, bad gank, I guess, yeah, it makes sense as a fundamental. Setting up objectives properly? Yeah, like I didn't, I wouldn't know that. Like okay. I wouldn't know that as a fundamental. Like what are they outside of those two? So she says setting up objectives. Um, learning how the champion mastery specific thing in terms of clearing your camps. So clearing camps. Yeah, clearing camp. Like yeah. learning, you know, the, what's the optimal clearly a champion. Mm-hmm. Um, what's a good gank, what's a bad gank, clearing camps. And then it's just mostly just league game fundamentals, like right. resetting on good yeah. item spikes. Um, right, yeah, because that, that's what I think. I, like, there's, the, there's like mid specific, and then there's jungle specific, and then there's game, game specific. specific. Yeah, or like game fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. there's not yeah. that many of them. There's dude. not many, right? No, it's yeah. the, the good gank and the bad thing gank is the biggest so one. I don't find that. Do you think this is this is this is helping people, but people don't people don't get it. People won't really yeah. internalize this. You that's don't right. Think. Yeah. So I, I feel bad for this guy, but I, I it's like a good the post. post. Yeah. I think Again, it's a good post. for beginners, he should he should emphasize this. Uh, because, but people should be able to read into it. He said mm. he what rank he is. It's not like he's saying like this is he's a coach or something like that, you know. Um. Okay, let's look at this last one, yep. and then we'll see what we what we can do. Champion here. mains. Um, what I learned from going from two hundred and seventy LP masters to D one. So I'm assuming he means going. He went down. He, he, okay, here we go. This is going to be a bit different from your traditional what I learned climbing to X. If you skim through, don't skip the last bullet. Late last year, I managed to hit Masters, and I've been able to constantly hold it ever since. I had a ridiculously high MMR this season from crushing placements and holding a high win rate until my peak of about 270 LP, at which point I was getting full GM challenger lobbies. Last night, I demoted by playing to D175 LP. Here is what I've learned. The highest lobbies in the game are fun as fuck. I've had the pleasure of playing with and against multiple pros, ex-pros, coaches, highly skilled streamers. The coordination, the caliber of play, and the, from what I experienced, sportsmanship br- breathes an entire new life to the game, and this is some of the most fun I've ever had on any video game. What do we always say? We hard agree. We hard... Ag- Whoa, what a great... I've never, we've never heard this that take. We've no. never heard this take outside of our content ever. High level players are miserable. That's what everyone that's says. The, that's terrible. the consensus, right? Like the, the thing that like niche, pu- niche pushes, isn't it? That like the, the master plus is miserable. That's right. You know, it is, it's the opposite. Yeah. High elo games are the most fun. Mm. You have the true most fun periods in the game at the, at the very, very, very beginning and at the end. Wow. What a refreshing take. There is no reward aside from your personal, your own personal values. Orders, emotes, and visual rank aside, there is no reward for achieving a high rank apart from getting into less toxic lobbies. Some influencers say that you should probably only push above diamond if you want to go pro or become a content creator, both of which are extremely unlikely to happen. And I 100% agree unless you have a passion for improving and want to experience some of the best the game has to offer. Interesting. Which is basically what we say, right? Um, That is true. You either want to go pro or a content creator or you want to ha- you have a healthy relationship with the game and you want to get something more out of it. 100% agree, right? We agree with that. The matchmaking system is fixed in some way. This is, of course, going to be controversial to some and put this under the blanket term winners-losers queue. I think calling it this is extremely lazy and disingenuous. The vast majority Absolutely. of games that have multiplayer matchmaking structure use EOM, including League. To keep it short, the matchmaking system skews your matches to keep you playing more and longer. Um, so... So that basically what this is saying is that it actually is fit. Like there are games where like the, the matchmaker does want you to lose. I don't believe it. I don't believe this, that it wants you to keep you playing longer. I think the way it works that it tries to. What it tries to do is essentially, um, I was talking to Charlie about this with some of the games that mm. he was in a, like a master gym that system tests you, whether you're te- able to win this exactly, game. Exactly. Because then it's able to, that those are the games that fix your MMR guys. Yeah. So if you play perfectly out of mind, win those games, they're definitely winnable. 
those are the games that, you know, fix your account or push you up really high. Are you talking but, about the ones where you go in a low elo lobby and you're the high elo one? Or are you talking about the lobbies where you're the you're a lower one in a high elo lobby? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think they test you. I I don't think it has anything to do with you playing longer. It's trying to fit, put put people in the it's right trying place. To get, it's trying to test you by putting mm. you in lower elo lobby, some, lobby sometimes and then high elo lobby sometimes to calibrate where you're at. But most of the time you'll be around where you're at. But I think that those they put those they games put in, in there. I agree. And it's I think that's really important for matchmaking. Otherwise, people would never be able to properly yeah, climb, I think. I agree. But I don't want to get into that. I no, I don't. Yeah, that's, so that we could go in circles. Dodging is completely out of control. My Q times reach upwards to 8 to 12 minutes during my peak which I'm totally okay with but when there's 4 to 5 lobbies are dodged in champ selects yep 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 so yeah um yes Nathan we're, we're very aware that Q times and especially from us being from Oris we know that we have 40 minute lobby I mean 40 minute Q, Q times, times 30 minutes it's, it's it is the a big negative of, of, of high early games um I would say if you're in a major reason region it's not as bad but like you said there's a lot of dodges I kind of feel like there has like dodging. Ah, oh, it's a it's such. I don't want to get into it today. Let's not get into yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's a whole other thing. Elo inflation is completely out of control, along with boosting account sharing and transfer of using. So this guy's gone from things that we agree with. To something. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's gone back. This is like what we say. We don't know what we're going to get yeah, into. Yeah, I mean, this horror is a horror story. story. How long is his post? Okay. Um, Okay, accounts around level 30 to 50 are very common in Master Plus. These accounts abuse the new account MMR. Yeah, boring. Don't want to go into that. Boosting account sharing is also extremely prevalent. There was a point in my time where every match I could look up someone's scores and see that their flash key was reversed. Again, with all this stuff, what this guy doesn't understand is that it always balances out. That's You're right. going to have really frustrating games where, yes, yep. you, but it, in the long run, it balances out. So as long as you're playing a lot of games, it doesn't matter. So, yes, it's true. Yes, it's a bit of a problem, but it's not really a problem. It's only a problem if you play in the short term. Soft inting is at its peak in Masters Plus. Soft inting is a version of inting that the system can't pick up on. So if someone feels like the game is already over, they will sit AFK just long enough. Um, yeah, I would say there is like there is like a period where I've, I've actually said, said this before where I feel like the, the the most common type of player who gets to master is the one that gets to master is really overwhelmed by how big the gap is between master and challenger. And then they just rot away in the, in the bottom of master. Mm -hmm. They just sit there because mm -hmm. they actually have to push themselves to another level. So what people do is they just make new accounts. They make new accounts, change their name, have all these edgy little account names. Because they need the dopamine for the free wins They again. need the dopamine. They then duo boost their way up back to, to the master, sell the account or just have the account or ruin the MMR, leave it, whatever they want to do. But basically that is the most common. It is very, there is like a, a, I would say like a little bit of a cesspool at the bottom of a master, yeah. like zero to hundred LP. <laughs> but then you, once you get past that and you get out of those low master games, it kind of gets, it gets way better. So that yeah. is, I would somewhat agree with that. Somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah, again, it's accessible, but again, it will even out over time. It, yes, exactly. You have the on both. The system's not holding you down in master. No. I, I I know what master tier gameplay looks exactly. like. There's a lot to work on. Exactly. Um, if you want to improve the resources for hitting any rankers out there, the educational space for league is very oversaturated. Like I mentioned above, the general consensus: if you want to push beyond diamond, your motive should be something either career focused for league guides, videos, and freelance coaching, all available and in abundance. Everyone is trying to make it. If you want to improve, you can do your own research and find the right content from the right people don't say don't take someone's rank as the end all know all the oversaturation especially from co content creators below gm challenger have caused a lot of bad information to circulate and become paradigm question everything i would agree with that quote think for yourself you should always question everything no matter who you're getting your advice from 100 percent and don't ruin your life over this game um yeah this is kind of looks like here um very similar to that is that this post we always cover uh, you know, he struggled hard mentally, wanted to escape, turned to league as an addiction, etc. A few months ago, I decided to take back control. My friends at PT started working out, dieting, etc. That's great. I took the hardened skills I learned in league and have been applying them to my life. The decline in LP is reflecting how healthy and happy his life is. Great. That's excellent. My confidence and self-worth come from within, not from a numbers on a screen. Um, League has a serious mental health epidemic and it takes a tremendous amount of self-control to break free of the cycle. I would agree. And that's what we're trying to fix here on the Broken by Concept. I wouldn't even say just League in general, just internet culture. I think and just everything generation. online, yeah. yeah. Whether it's social media, porn, gaming in general, that's gambling, right. yep. everything. Yep. St streaming. The best part is I know months ago I would have been stuck in deep depression over demotion. 
Yeah, and so great stuff. Um, it's extremely freeing to let go and have fun with the game, and I find more reward IRL than I would be could be playing League even at my best. And that's good on him. And it seems like for him, he found his why. He didn't really want to push above Master. He didn't get any competitive outlet from it. League wasn't for him. So props to him, and it takes a lot of energy and um, bravery to kind of get out of it because it is very addicting. So um, I think there's some things I agree, some things I don't agree, but across the board, some interesting things to take away from it. Um, any thoughts on this post, Nathan? I think it's uh, cool that he shared it. Put, he put, looks like he put a lot of yeah. thought into this. Yeah, he did. Wait, but he said he went down like quite a bit. Is that right? So he, said he went back to yeah. He said he went down in LP because of this. But I mean, it's because he's just not putting time and effort and energy into it, yeah, right? So that's I think right. it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll go to champion Reddit. Do you want to quickly go to champ Reddit? Yep. Okay. All right, that's it here for this episode. We looked at we quickly we looked, looked at, at the main the the, 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 the Rexi mains. mains and um there's they're not, not very yeah, let's there's just not much to get talk me about. Out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, to put it lightly. Yeah. Good work, guys. We'll see you next week for more broken by concept action.